Hello there, this is going to be my Unity 3D tutorial on Prim's algorithm. Now we're going to be using Prim's algorithm to create a maze. Um, you might want to check out this Wikipedia entry first. But first, in our video, we're just going to be going over basics, of, in part one at least. We're just going to create a grid that we can use for our maze. So here I have Unity open, and I have already created this prefab. It's very simple. Um, go ahead and look at it. I'll drag one into the scene, and you can see that it's very simply just a regular box, which I made using game object. Create other cube, and um, it has a default material on it just to look nice. I'm using the Tuni lighted outline. You can get that by going to assets, import package, and Tuni shading. It also has a new text added to it. And the new text is looking upwards, as you can see. I have that by making the rotation 90-90. Actually, this could probably go up a little bit, but it's okay at zero point. Anyway, I have that in a prefab. To make prefabs, if you don't know, I'll quickly go over it. Go to create prefab, uh, name it, and then drag whatever game object you, you've already made in the scene straight into that prefab. And it creates a prefab of it. Okay, so we can get rid of these because I already have the cell prefab. And now the main camera, it's slightly different than default. We have the Y position at 30, X and Z are 0, and the rotation at 90, 90. Now, um, let's see, okay. So what we need to do is we need to make a grid of cells. And we could easily do that by putting a whole bunch of cells into the scene and changing their positions like this. But that's not a very good idea. Um, it's very ineffective and not very good programming practice. So we're going to create a grid uh, for right now, 5x5 five five grid, during runtime, which means with code. So let's create an empty game object by going game object create empty. Set the position at zero and create a C sharp script. I'm going to name it grid scripts. And we name it game object grid. And the grid script is going to go inside of the grid object. Open up grid script. And here we go. Okay, we don't need the update function. First, what we need is a public transform cell prefab. So this is going to be a um, variable of type transform named cell prefab and it's going to be public. In this tutorial I'm going to be setting most of my initial variables in the editor, in the Unity editor as you can see. So um, here we have the cell prefab. I'm going to drag my cell prefab into the variable named cell prefab. Now to create a grid we're going to start with uh, creating just an object, so or just a single object. So I'm going to call a new function called create grid, and then I'm going to create that function. Now, when the game starts, this will be called. It'll go through everything inside of here. Um, it will then call create grid. And we will create the grid technique here. Okay. So to create the grid, I'm going to be using the keyword instantiate. Let's see if I can spell it right. Instantiate. Now it's going to be using an object. So we have an object already. That's our cell prefab. So here it is. Instantiate cell prefab. Go ahead and see how this works. 
if we did it right, it should create a single cell right here. Perfect. Okay. And as you can see, this cell is made during runtime or with code. Before we start the game, there's no cell there. After we start the game, the script runs and it creates one for us. So very handy. But we don't just want one, we want a couple. So how many do we want? Well, we're going to make that a variable too. So it's going to be a vector 3 called size. I'm making it public yet again so that I can set it inside the editor. Let's have the size be 5. One pod. But actually, you know what? I don't need this to be 90. As long as I change this off, 90 should be okay. Hold on, let me just make sure that's correct. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I don't know why was, the wide position was 90. They just have to be the same, and it'll work out. Anyway, we have 515, and here, vector 3 size. Okay, so we have that set right here, 515. And the reason we're using X and Z is so it's a flat grid instead of coming out up towards the camera. Because the camera is over the ground, looking down. Here, I'll create a terrain with this so you can see. So the camera is looking down at it. Right. So here's the ground. The camera is up here, looking down. So we don't need the train, that was just, just to show you. Let's see, okay, so we don't want to just instantiate one, we want to loop through and create several. So we're going to be using something called the for loop. So we say in x equals zero, x is less than size.x. Size.x is the um, thing we said over here. Size x is five. So from zero to five x plus plus, which means that x gets added by 1 every time it loops through. So, if we go ahead and run this, we're going to have 5 cells, but they're all going to be in the same position, and we don't want them to all be in the same position. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to set the position for each one. So the positions in Unity is vector threes, so we're going to create a new vector three. It's going to be at x zero zero. So remember how I said before that this is going to loop. X is going to be zero, one, two, three, and then four. Well, every time it creates a new object, the x position is going to be different. So we're going to have the cell prefab at zero zero zero, and then one zero zero, two zero zero, three zero zero, and four zero zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Oops. Oh, yes. Um, error here is no overload for instantiate takes two arguments. We also have to add in this extra thing, which is called turnion.identity. And you don't need to worry about that. That's just rotation. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again. And there we go. We have a 5 by, five, or a five by 1 uh, line. But we don't want a line. We want a grid. So we're not going to be just using X in the loop. We're also going to be using Z. So let's go ahead and change this to Z. Now we're going to be, or this is what's called a double for loop. So if we have 4x equals 0, x is less than size x, z equals 0, z is less than size z, we have this new vector 3, x, 0, and z. This should create our grid. As you can see, it does. So, that's the very uh, start. Very simple grid creation, and it's customizable. We can have 10 by 20, let's say. And it will create a 10 by 20 grid. Okay, so that's part one, creating the grid. Thanks for watching.